Okay, welcome back kiddos for the second half of our exam review. Um, this is exam four. Once again, you've already uh, completed this worksheet in class in your small groups and you're going it over, going over it with me right now. Hopefully, um, I won't make any mistakes like I did on the first half. Please don't give me a hard time. Remember, I'm the one that grades your exam. Okay, so we're going to do some empirical formulas to start out with. Remember, empirical formula is the lowest whole number mole ratio. So I'm giving you percent by weight for this first problem and that doesn't help us out too much. So remember when I give you percent by weight we assume we have 100 grams of this compound. Now the only reason I assume 100 grams is because it makes the first step of the math easy. For instance 35.98 percent by weight well if the weight's 100 grams doesn't that mean I have 35.98 grams of that element which is aluminum, and 64.02% by weight would be um, 64.02 grams out of 100 grams of that element, which is sulfur. Now, we're not nearly done yet. Remember, we want to find the lowest whole number mole ratio. So that means, kiddos, we need to hop from moles, or grams, excuse me, to moles of each element. Put grams on the bottom, moles on top. We'll put a one by mole for each. And of course, to find grams, we need to use our periodic table. So aluminum has an atomic weight of 26.98 grams. Okay, and sulfur to the nearest hundredth, 32.07 grams per mole. Okay, so this will help us find moles of aluminum and moles of sulfur. So let's plug those in. We have, let's clear this out, 35.98 divided by 26.98, which was the atomic mass of aluminum. That gives me 1.334 moles of aluminum. And for sulfur, 64.02 divided by 32.07 grams per mole gives me 1.996 moles of sulfur. Now we're not done. Remember we have to have the lowest whole number mole ratio. These are moles, but it's not obviously the lowest whole number. So to do that we divide by the lowest number of moles. So that's one. And let's see. 1.99 clear that out. 1.996 divided by 1.334 is 1.496, which is of course really close to 1.5. And that's not a whole number. So the mole ratio is 1 to 1.5. If I double each of these, won't those turn into whole numbers? 2 and 3. So my empirical formula, folks, would be Al2S3. Okay, let's do another one. Um, number 14, we have 60.00% carbon. So if I assume I have 100 grams, that's 60.00 grams of carbon. 4.44% uh, hydrogen, that would be 4.44 grams of hydrogen. And 35.56% oxygen, that would be 35.56 grams out of 100 oxygen. Remember, we want the lowest whole number, mole ratio. So we'll go from grams to moles of each element. And remember, we've been doing this since September, haven't we? Put one by mole. And carbon, I'm not going to look these up with you now. Trust me, carbon has an atomic mass of 12.01. Hydrogen is 1.01. .01, and oxygen is 16.00. So now I'll find moles of carbon moles of hydrogen, and moles of oxygen. Let's plug and chug, shall we? So we have 60.00 divided by 12.01 gives me 4.996. And hydrogen, 4.44 divided by 1.01 .01 gives me 4.396. Boy, those aren't very pretty, are they? And finally, oxygen 35.56 divided 
divided by 16.00 gives me 2.222, actually 2.223. So, obviously we don't have whole numbers here, so we divide by the lowest number of moles, 2.223, well that's going to give me a 1, 2.223 and 2.223, let's see what these turn out to be. So 4.996 divided by 2.223 is 2.25. And 4.396 divided by 2.223 is 1.98, which is going to be 2. Now, these are still not whole numbers, so what can we multiply each of these by to make them whole numbers? Well, let's try 4. So 2.25 times 4 is 9. 2 times 4 is 8. 1 times 4 is 4. So my empirical formula would be C. I have C right here. 9 H 8 O 4. And there we have it. C9 H 8 O 4. Okay. Now, what about molecular formula? That's next. Well, we start out the same way we do with empirical formulas. We first find the empirical formula, then we can find the molecular formula. So I give you percent by weight again. Actually, I give you the actual weight of each element, which saves you a step. You don't have to assume 100 grams. I'm giving you the weight. In a compound, you find that in that compound there are 49.98 grams of carbon and 10.47 grams of hydrogen. So now we're just going to go from grams to moles. Remember we want to find the lowest whole number mole ratio. So carbon 12.01 grams per mole, hydrogen 1.01. So let's see how many moles of each we have. 49.98 divided by 12.01 equals 4.162 moles of carbon and hydrogen you have 10.47 divided by 1.01 gives me 10.37 moles of hydrogen so we'll divide by the lowest number of moles 4.162 for each one that's a one and let's see 10.37 divided by 4.162 is 2.49, which we're going to call 2.5. So we can double everything. Oh, yeah, there we go. So our empirical formula is C2H5. Now I'm not done yet. I want to find the molecular formula. So we're going to find the empirical weight here, which is the weight of two carbons and five hydrogens. So two carbons, remember, weigh about 12 grams apiece and five hydrogens weigh 1.01 a piece. So that would give me an empirical weight of close to 29 grams per mole. Now my molar mass is 58 grams per mole. So the molecular weight is 58 grams per mole. Well my empirical compound only weighs 29, which is two times bigger. So instead of two carbons and five hydrogens, we're going to double that. So instead of C2H5, we're going to have twice that size, which will be C4H10. And if you add the atomic masses of four carbons and ten hydrogens, you're going to get pretty close to 58 grams per mole. Okay, number 16, uh, we have another weight percent. So we have 46.68% of nitrogen, so out of 100 grams of the compound, it would be 46.68 grams of nitrogen. And what else? The rest is oxygen. So that means I'm going to pull up my calculator here because the total has to be 100 minus 46.68, which was nitrogen, leaves me with 53.32 uh, grams of oxygen. So we'll go from grams to moles. And nitrogen is 14 point, we haven't looked that one up yet. So nitrogen 14.01 to the nearest hundredth. And oxygen 16.00. 
So we have 46.68 divided by 14.01 gives me 3.332 moles of nitrogen and 53.32 divided by 16.00 gives me 3.33 moles of oxygen. Well, that's pretty. That's about the same number. So if we divide by the lowest number, we're going to get a one-to-one -one ratio, aren't we? So my empirical formula, folks, is just NO. Now, the empirical weight of that would be the weight of a nitrogen plus an oxygen. Nitrogen's about 14. Oxygen's about 16. So that gives us an empirical weight of 30. The molecular weight is 60, which, as you can see, is twice as big again. So we don't need one N and one O. We need two times as many Ns and Os which would be N2O2. So that's our molecular formula. Remember, molecular formula is the actual ratio. Empirical formula is the lowest whole number ratio. OK, last thing we need to do, kiddos, is balance equations. And so for some of these on the test, you're going to have to be able to write formulas again. Like I said, formula writing is a big part of the test. Make sure you can do it. So let's try to blow through these quickly. Hydrogen, kiddos, is H2. It's a diatomic element. Remember the seven diatomic elements? Back in the ninth grade, I learned them from Mr. Shiro as the Brinkelhoff elements. That means they're never by themselves. They're either bonded with another element or they come in pairs in their elemental state. Hydrogen's one of those, H2. Bromine's another one of those, Br2. It makes hydrogen bromide. So HBr, nonmetal to nonmetal. There are no prefixes, so I know there's one of each. So let's just put a 2 in front of HBr to balance that. Letter B, potassium chlorate. Potassium's K plus. It's in group 1. Chlorate. We haven't seen that one, I don't think, today. Chlorate. ClO3, negative 1. So let's see. ClO3, negative 1. So it would be KClO3, just one of each of those makes potassium, which is K plus, chloride. Chlorine comes from group 17. It's negative 1. So it's KCl plus oxygen. Oxygen is another one of my Brinkelhoff elements, O2. So to balance that, I'll put a 2 here to give me 2 Ks and 2 Cls. It gives me 6 oxygen, so I'll put a 3 there. OK, the rest of these we'll just quickly balance. Let's see, FeCl2 makes F. Let's see, uh, two chlorines, and let's put a two here to give me six chlorines. Put a th oh, I didn't leave myself very much room there. So a three in front of Cl2 gives me six chlorines, and a two in front of Fe. That's pretty easy. Let's name this guy real quick, just for fun. FeCl3. Fe is iron, isn't it? Now, iron is one of those elements right here in the middle. It can have multiple oxidation states. It can have more than one positive charge. That means when we name it, folks, we need to include Roman numerals. So I'm going to leave a spot there for Roman numerals. Cl is chlorine, but since it's binary, remember, we end these with ide. So the problem is, what is the Roman numeral that goes there? Well, let's see. Chloride is negative 1. It's in group 17. Remember, kiddos, it's one away from being like argon, so it adds an electron, it adds a negative charge, it has a negative one charge. And there are three of those. So I have three negatives here. Well, iron, there's only one of those, that means it has to be three positive. So the Roman numeral here would be the charge of the metal, which is three. So the proper name for that product is iron, Roman numeral three, chloride. All right, let's take a look at, uh, this is, let's rewrite this. This looks a little messy here. NaN3 plus 2Na reacts, oh, hold it. <laughs> I can't even figure out what's there. NaN3, that must be an arrow. 
makes 2Na plus 3N2. I'm guessing that's what that is. Boy, I'm getting bad at this. So I have six nitrogens there, so I'll put a 2 in front of that to give me six nitrogens. That gives me, oh, okay, that's done. So we have sodium nitride, makes sodium metal, and nitrogen gas. And my last one. Um, Li, that's lithium metal and water, makes lithium hydroxide and hydrogen gas. So let me see, let's play around with this. Put a two here in front of lithium hydroxide. We'll put a two here. That gives me two oxygens. Um, oh, so that would have to be, oh, it looks like I've just put a two in front of just about everything. Let's see. That gives me two oxygens. I've got two hydrogens plus two more is four. Oh, that does it. So two, 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 and one. Oh. That wasn't a very smooth way to present that, but it looks like it's balanced. Now, um, that's just about the whole exam. Don't forget, there's a, a going to be a there was a small section in this unit on intermolecular forces of attraction, and for those we talked about LDFs, dipole to dipole, and finally hydrogen bonding. I think I put maybe one question on the test that deal with those intermolecular forces. So please review your notes on intermolecular forces so you can answer that one question. I don't think there's more than one. Not a big deal. All right, kiddos. I hope you enjoyed this quick review. We're going to wrap it up. Good luck. Study hard, folks. We'll see you in class. May the force be with you. Bye-bye.